All right. Uh, really, first of all, I want to thank our crowd. It was an amazing environment. And, and uh, even after the game, them waiting on our players to come in the locker room, the passion and the energy and the loyalty they have is, is awesome. And we really appreciate that. Uh, uh, certainly helped us in the game, especially early in the game, to get us jump start a little bit and got out, got out of the gates pretty quickly. Uh, outstanding job, A.J. Turner and our kickoff return team and Coleman Hudson, our special teams coordinator, really blocked well. He, he hit the crease, exactly what we wanted. And then uh, one play and we're in the end zone. And then uh, so got some momentum defensively, got some stops, got some things going offensively. And you're up 17, and we just we just got to continue to to plow away on some things offensively. I, I think the, a lot of in the and I know from the the naked eye you say well it's an inside zone, but there's a lot of things going on as far as uh, getting the ball back out on the perimeter from the zone read, whether it's an inside zone or a bounce zone. And there were some things that we felt like we could have gotten in the game. We just we got a little stagnant there. But uh, proud of Brandon and and how he performs. Really, it's a big ball to uh, Brian Edwards on the sideline over there, uh, and then to answer their score to make it now a two score game with a field goal. You got two great balls thrown down the field. They bust the coverage on our sideline and Hayden Hurst can't catch the corner out and then uh, and the other play as well. So really proud of him, how he responded. That's what good teams do. They respond and they gain momentum back in the game and, and uh, you know there at the end didn't want to put our defense back on the field. We played it close to 100 snaps in the game. When you play a team like this, that's what they're going to do. They average 5.7 yards per play. We average 5.9. Uh, we needed to have more possessions in the game. Uh, really proud of our guys. When you play teams like this, you get them in the red zone. Those those pass zones condense down. It's harder to throw the ball. And when you're able to stop the run, it makes them very difficult. So we forced them to field goal. So that was part of the, the plan, was to grind it out a little bit more offensively, create ball control for us. And then when they did get the ball in the red zone, make stops. And when you play a team like this, this, this quarterback's going to play on Sunday. He's really good. So he'll be you know, up to Deshaun Watson, the, the second best quarterback we'll see this season, in my opinion. I mean, the guy's a really good player. You give those guys credit. They got a good football team, but it was a very gutty performance by our players. They kept battling, kept hanging in there in the game. They fought through adversity. Uh, we got to continue to build on that, and we need to have some consistency from that. And that's been my biggest issue with last week was not uh, how we, the emotionally how we played the game. But I'll go ahead and open it up for any questions. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. What was the plan going in? Was this Brandon's game from start to finish going in? That was that was the plan going in. You know, we felt like that we just got to continue to generate things in the run game, Josh. And and we felt like with the quarterback legs, it creates some things for us and what where we are. We're going to continue to progress our offense. We need to, uh, but you know, that was the plan going in. At this point, do you feel like Brandon is your quarterback? Yes. Will, d defensively, you guys made some big plays in the red zone. Is this a step forward defensively from last week or back, or, or where are we? <laughs> you, are you seriously asking me that question? Did you watch us last week? I did. I've got it on tape if you need to see it. It was embarrassing. It's a lot better. When you hold an offense like that, it was a really good offense. You just watch them through the, watch them every Saturday afternoon on the little ticker when it runs and see their scores. And you hold an offense like that to 15 points is an outstanding job, first of all, by our defensive staff, but mostly by our kids. You, our film from last week, I still got if you want to watch it. That last play on that option, was there any doubt that you were going to go for it on that no. fourth one? I no. Mean, we, we had played you know, 150 snaps. We were dead on defense. We had no pass rush. And that's, that's why those teams, the, the game is never over when you play teams like that. So I, when we went for it on the fourth down in our territory, you know, that was we, we needed to steal possessions in the game and keep them off the field. And uh, there was never – we didn't, didn't blink. It was just about a matter of what we called, and it was an outstanding call by Kurt and our staff. When, when you recruited Jamarcus King, did you see the potential for plays like that interception he had in the end zone? Right. I mean, he's got a lot of length. Uh, when you throw fade balls – uh, generally, you like to go against the, the shorter defensive backs. You know, they threw the back shoulder fade on Chris Lamont, who made a fantastic play uh, on that ball. I don't, people don't understand how difficult a play that is. But uh, Jamarcus made a really nice play on the ball. That was a huge momentum sw sw change in the game. They get the fourth down stop, and uh, they got a lot of momentum. And so, extremely proud of Jamarcus and the play he made right there. <laughs> um, at what point in the week did you guys decide that Brandon would be 
your guy. When did you guys make that decision? Well, Sunday, you know, Rope and I talked after the game. And again, it's, this is not a slight on Perry Orth at all. We need to have some legs from the, from the quarterback position at this time about where we are with our offense. And uh, felt like uh, that, that would be the best for us at this time. And we'll continue as we continue to evolve and guys continue to grow up in our system. And again, Randricus Davis played well. Brian Evers did some good things. Casey Crosby made a couple big catches. Hayden Hurst. I mean, there's a lot of firsts going on. Keel Pollard got some snaps tonight, which was good. David Williams played extremely well. Very proud of David. Uh, came in and made a huge catch on a third down. Uh, acrobatic catch, ball thrown behind him. Brandon did a nice job of keeping the play alive and then uh, made a couple nice runs where he knifed the defense. And that's what, something he needs to get behind his pads and do. And if he continues to do that, he's going to get a bunch of snaps. Just what does it say to you about David Williams coming off last week that he was able to, to come and deliver this kind of performance? Well, you know, David, I had a good talk this week about the things he needed to continue to improve on. It was just consistency in his performance every day. And I you give David credit. It, was a, it takes a mature young man to respond. And he responded the right way. But, you know, we had a lot of guys that responded that maybe not have been in the limelight of what we, where we are in our program. So, again, there's so many positives happening. Obviously, are we pleased that we won the game? Absolutely. But, you know, to me, it's more about the day-to-day, -day, about how we approach tomorrow. It's going to be really, really important to me about how our mindset is coming in the locker room. It's about the culture of your program and where it is. And our guys got to understand that part of it. We didn't understand that last Saturday night. Coach, um, beginning of the game, Brandon McElwain kept the ball a lot on the zone read. As it went on, it seemed like he kept handing off a little bit more. Was that by design, trying to uh, hold on to the ball, or was that just him handing it's, off a little bit more? It's twofold. Number one, it's, it's some are straight calls to give because of the ball handling and sometimes some mistakes that can be made. We just want to give the ball. Um, some runs are – are reads where it's going to be a read situations, and then really threefold. The defense sometimes can take away the quarterback's legs by how they play you, because it's it's old split back veer at the end of the day, and you're reading someone, and you by how you call your defense, you can try and take away a runner in the game, and they did some things to take away the quarterback's legs in the game. So we credit them for their adjustment. Well, the defense was on the field basically two thirds of the game. Can you just talk about conditioning and because that's a lot. Credit for Jeff Delman and, and our guys. I mean, they, they played well. We were we were gassed, but the guys you know kept persevering. Credit our kids, um, but uh, you know our strength staff. They've done an outstanding job of our guys being in shape and playing and playing a fast tempo. You play close to 100 snaps. I mean, that's a, that's a bunch of snaps, especially rushing the passer. That's the most exerted <coughs> thing you do as a player is rush the passer. It just deadens your legs. And uh, I'm really, really extremely proud of our guys. Hey, uh, you kind of called Chris out a little bit last week, and this week thought he played much, much better. Can you talk about the way he responded? Well, I, you know, we did a couple tackling drills this week, you know, for him and several guys, and and he displayed great toughness in the week. And I said, why don't you do it on game day? You know, you obviously are capable of doing it. So, you know, again, that goes back to coaching. You gotta, you gotta get it out of your players, and that's my fault, not his. Your initial impression of how your offensive line played tonight? Good. I, mean, I thought we, you know, we got yardage when we needed to get them. You know, uh, we thought we protected the passer pr pretty well. We had one edge pressure. We had a uh, pressure coming off the goal line that was on the running back. Um, so we'll go back and look at that. But I thought, uh, you know, uh, for given the opportunities they were in the game, we, we got some things going in the run game. I think we got to continue to to search for the things we do really well in the run game. A lot of people are playing us from a three down look and four down look. There are some runs that are good versus three down. There's some that are good versus four down. We need to be able to call it and haul it, so to speak, in my opinion, and, and that verbiage, and that means just be able to run it and block all fronts. So we got to we got to continue to narrow some things down. A little outside of the game, but I noticed during the Gamecock walk, you had your guys kind of zoned in and hanging out with the fans a little bit more than in the past. Is it important to you for them to take in the whole game day experience? Absolutely. I told our guys, I don't want any headsets on in Gamecock walk. We need to appreciate our fans and what they do for us. And and uh, that's really important to me. You know, and those, those people spend a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of energy and passion to come watch us play. And we need to return that respect back. And uh, that's, that's really important to me. And it's good to hear our guys handle it the right way. The medium to deep stuff that Brandon misses high occasionally, is there a theme there? In terms Normally of it's overstriding. When you overstride, you drop your elbow, cheese does something, it pushes the ball. And that's something we'll continue to work on. Um, so, um, but, you know, I really thought he was very accurate on the deep ball. I thought the one with uh, 
you know, AJ, I thought could have laid out maybe, you know, on that one on their sideline. We had the, the wheel route from the back. We, we picked the backer off, or we legally picked the backer off. And uh, I thought he had him there. I thought that was a well thrown ball. He throws the deep ball extremely well. Can you talk about the negative plays that your defense was able to come up with, the tackles behind the line of scrimmage, kind of putting them behind down in distance? Yeah, well, that's, it's, you know, when you play a team like that, you got to get vertical penetration. And uh, our guys got some good vertical penetration in there. But you got to finish on this quarterback. This guy was slippery. And he'd bounce around. He's a gamer. He's a tough kid. He battles and battles and battles. And uh, really, uh, really proud of how our guys kept what I call relative contain off the backside. So when he spins out, we have somebody there. We really needed to hem him up. And I want to compliment Darius English, the play. We had a max blitz on the two-point play. And uh, something we haven't covered a lot. And he, for him to peel the quarterback in that situation was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, that's not something that you see a lot. And it's a heads-up, smart play. A uh, heck of a play by Darius. Was uh, getting guys like Randrikis, Keel, and uh, Chavis more involved in the pass game the plan, or was that a byproduct of Debo being out? Well, no. I mean, I, you know, obviously we'd love to have Debo, but right now, I mean, that's that's where we are, and those guys are good players. I mean, Randrikis made a fantastic catch on our sideline. Uh, he's going to be a really, really good football player. Chavis Dawkins is going to be a really good player. Brian Edwards is a good player. I mean, those guys are – they're all going to continue. The game's going to continue to slow down for them. They're going to continue to play well. And I'm uh, extremely proud of those guys. Yeah. You, What's that? So do you expect Evo back next week? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, I, you know, it's kind of a game-time decision. We felt like he might be able to go. <laughs> Coach, you mentioned his Brandon's mobility. Uh, but what else did you see from him that made you want to start him this week? Well, I think he's just got a, a lot of poise about him. You know, he's got a lot of, you know, a lot of the the it factor you look for at that position. Um, he doesn't get phased by a lot in the spring game. I was extremely impressed with his poise and how he came in and handled himself. Um, and he continues to work at it. He's got a very good work ethic. He's extremely intelligent. Um, so there's a lot of uh, of the intangible qualities you look for at the position. So. Extremely proud of Brian. Yep. It, is it any tougher for young quarterbacks to run at kind of that, that quick tempo? And how, how is Brandon sort of keeping that kind of organized? Well, I think that sometimes the tempo helps those guys because it eliminates a lot of the think pre-snap thinking that go on. And so th there's some times that I think at times in spring and in fall camp that he played better with a faster tempo, which we tried to create sometimes. And we hurt ourselves. And the one jump off sides, I mean, we, we can't do that coming out. We got a first and 10 coming off the goal line. And we got to continue to move the ball there. But, um, you know, I think he plays well when he's, when he's playing fast. Yeah. Uh, Zay Jones, 22 catches. Have you ever faced a team that how many have? 22. Jones he had a bunch. 20. Have you ever seen <laughs> an individual have that many catches against? Yeah, he's a good player. Well, you know, you know, we really looking back on the third downs. We rolled the coverage on top of him a bunch. Now, of those, his long was 15. Yeah. That's the key. They don't big play you, they can't beat you. Because when they get in the red zone, they struggle to run the ball. Well, you, and I guess you kind of. football 101. You kind of alluded to that earlier, I guess, keeping in front. Keep it in front. Yeah. So what? It's frustrating. Everybody can boo me for where we're playing, but at the end of the day, they get in the red zone. They got to struggle to score. That was the game plan. I didn't think he had 22. That's a bunch, huh? <laughs> but his longest to, was 15. They were trying to give him 23 so he could tie the record, but they didn't. I'm glad he didn't tie it. Talk, <laughs> talk to Steve to your left. You might. Yeah. Sticking on the theme of, of red zone a little bit. They, they get there six times and, and I think got close a couple others. Does that concern you at all or is that just kind of the nature of playing a team like this? No, it's part of how you play. I learned something from a guy I worked with for a long time ago. It only counts when they score. I, I, don't, I don't look at the stat sheet and say, I want, how many total yards they have? No, I look at the scoreboard. I could care less how many yards they have as long as we win the game. Do what it takes to win the game. I told our players, if they don't big play us, and they had one big play run on the counter coming on our sideline with Summers, and then they had two big play passes on DeAndre and Quay on the over route that we busted. So I think they had three explosive plays in the game. An offense like that with 90-something snaps, three explosive plays, and you hold them to 5.7 yards for a play, that is an outstanding defensive performance. Now, you're going to look at the stat sheet and go, that's 519 yards. These guys stink. That's not, that's not right. It's yards per play. When you start looking at stats now, 
in football. It's not about yards. It's about yards per play. Because with all the tempo teams you play, and you're going to play 91 snaps in a game, and you give up 5.7 yards per play against an offense like that, that is an outstanding job. We had 5.9. I'm going to round it up to six. <laughs> so, all right. Anything else for Coach? Right. All right, we'll let him go. All right, thanks. Thank